cool. Oh yes, the butcher paper is out, and that's how you know we're getting crafty today. Welcome to Make Anything, I'm Devin, and you may remember this little guy from a few weeks ago. This is my great wide shark, one of my rejected animals, a character that I drew for my rejected animals Instagram page. I really enjoy sharing my little doodles with you guys, and it was fun bringing that to this channel and trying my hand at making one of the characters in 3D with a 3D pen. That's what this guy is. But in that video, a lot of you were asking me to 3D scan this and 3D print it. That's right, today we're gonna be 3D printing the Great Wide Shark, making it look really nice and clean. And then I'm also gonna be painting my very first 3D print. So that should be interesting. Let's go ahead and get right to it. What you're seeing here is my Einscan SP 3D scanner scanning my shark in full color. And that's why it's got all these different flashing colors. It's how the scanner collects color information about this object. The shark sits on the rotating turntable as the scanner collects information from every angle. And here in the software, you can see it constructing the 3D model based on that information. So I actually scanned this three times in three different orientations. And with all that information combined, we have a pretty good representation of the great wide shark. What's interesting is that we aren't seeing a solid object here. This is just point data. If we zoom in here, you can see that all this really is, is a cluster of colored pixels in three dimensional space. And all of those together give us a sense of the shape. However, to actually create a 3D printable model, we have to convert this to a mesh. Luckily, that feature is built into the Einscan software, so we can just click here to create a watertight model. And any amount of detail here is a bit excessive for 3D printing, but we'll just go medium for now. Here is the mesh that is created. And as you can see, it looks a lot like our 3D pen model. I already removed the color at this point because we're not gonna need that for 3D printing. But hey, it looks pretty accurate. Although all of this texture does seem a bit much and I'm not sure how well it would 3D print. So I actually ended up taking this into Mesh Mixer and significantly cleaning it up. So as you can see here with the updated model, I basically used the reduce function in Mesh Mixer to create this low poly look. And then I went back in with the sculpting tools to create all the detailed facial features like the eyes and the mouth. Still no gills though, sorry guys. So now we have a much cleaner model for sure, but this still wouldn't be super easy to print on my FDM printers because there's no way to print this without having a lot of support material, which ends up being pretty nasty. So what I did was cut the model right down the middle and split it into two parts like this. That way I could hopefully print it without any support material and then I could just stick it back together once it's printed. The toughest part is gonna be this overhang right here, which is pretty steep but that fin is small enough and it's very thin, so I think it'll work out. Let's send it to the printer. Here's the back half of the shark printing out on the R3D CreateBot 3D printer. And as you can see, we did manage to pull off that little overhang on the fin. So in the end, the model came out looking really nice. Next, we'll go ahead and print the other half. And we wanna capture as much detail as we can here. So I'm printing at 0.1 millimeter layer height. All right, both parts came out great. So now we'll glue the two halves together and I'm just gonna finish off this bottle of super glue, try to slather some on there and then quickly stick the two halves together. In the meantime, I was also printing out this little stand for our model using Filamentum's wood fill. And this is a really nice woody looking filament, although it can be tricky to print with. You definitely want a direct drive extruder and you print at a lower than usual 170 degrees Celsius or so. There were a couple failed attempts before this, 
but in the end, the Chidi Tech X Pro 3D printer did a really great job printing out this piece. So the idea is to mount my shark to the base with this little acrylic rod right here. And I came up with this idea after printing the shark, so I don't have a hole in the shark to actually mount this to. So we're just gonna drill one into the bottom. So I'll kind of figure out how I want this to be oriented, where do I want that hole to be, and then go ahead and line up the drill and go for it. Huh, must be a dull bit. Let's try again with a bit more pressure. Whoa, okay, not the cleanest hole, but I think we can make that work. I'm also gonna take the acrylic rod to my bandsaw and make it a little bit shorter. Now, I don't wanna mess up the acrylic while I'm painting this shark, so for now I'm gonna use this pencil as a placeholder. It's about the same size, and it has the added benefit of this pointy end, so I can just stab it into place. Now I'm gonna go ahead and give this a quick coat of filler primer. So this is some Duplicolor High Fill Primer, and you want High Fill because that's basically what's filling in the cracks and inconsistencies in our model. Now that we've got a coat of primer, we can go ahead and fill in the larger holes using this wood filler. In the past, I've used Bondo for things like this, but people were suggesting wood fill, and it's actually a great suggestion because for one thing, it costs less, it's way less hazardous, it's easier to sand, it's kind of better in every way for this use. So I'll definitely be using wood fill moving forward whenever I have to uh, fill in superficial gaps like the ones in this shark. It's also nice because I can just smooth it out with my fingers without worrying about poisoning myself, you know? I can also clean up some of the little boogers and strings that have formed on the teeth and around the top of the print here. In case you're wondering, this interestingly shaped X-Acto blade is part of this kit I got from AMX3D. It's got a bunch of different blades, which can be really helpful when you're trying to clean up prints that have tough to reach areas. I'll put a link to that in the description. I'm also gonna hit that shark with another round of wood fill once the first coating has dried out so that I can really fill in these larger gaps. And then we'll also go ahead and use it on these smaller little holes we've got all along the top of the model here. This wood filler is really great because it's so soft that you can kind of smear it all over without being too worried and know that it'll just dust off really quickly with some sandpaper. So I made sure to fill in as many of those little holes as I could and now I'll go ahead and sand this really quickly, a rough pass using some 100 grit sandpaper. I'll fold it in half four times like this to give myself a kind of stiffer piece of sandpaper. In this case, I don't mind rounding out the corners a bit on that low poly surface, but if I did want really clean flat sides, I would probably end up making a sanding block to make sure that the sandpaper is completely flat. Here you can see that original blue plastic showing through again, and that actually reveals the parts of the print that are being sanded down the most. Sanding down little details like these teeth can be tricky, but you just gotta be patient and do little tiny motions. Little, little circles should often do the trick. Once I've done a fair bit of sanding, I'm gonna go back outside and do another several coats of this filler primer to continue smoothing out the model. By the way, my color settings aren't wrong here. There was just a really crazy sunset going on, and that's why everything's all red. Here we are the next day, where I did a few extra coats to really build up that filler. Technically, as you add more and more layers of filler, you are smoothing out some of the details and losing some of the really fine stuff. But with this model, there really isn't that much fine detail. So I'm better off just coating on plenty of filler primer and making the job easier on myself. I got impatient waiting for this to dry, so I thought it would be a neat little shortcut to stick my shark inside of my Matter Hacker's print dry filament drying system to see if I could suck the humidity out of there and dry my model more quickly. But when I checked on it an hour later, well, it turned out that wasn't such a great idea because that seam between the two parts totally cracked open. 
I guess the printed parts might have shrank a little bit, causing this seam to reform. Well, that's a bummer. I'll have to go back in, do another rough sanding pass, and go ahead and use some more wood fill to refill that crack. This process of applying primer to build up the surface of the model and then smooth it back down with sandpaper can go on and on and on pretty much endlessly because you can always get a little bit smoother. But at some point you gotta say, all right, that's good enough, and then keep moving forward. If you're going for an absolutely perfect part, you'll slowly work up with sandpaper until you're sanding this down with something like two or 3,000 grit sandpaper. But in my case, I'm actually gonna finish it off with an unsanded coat of primer, which leaves behind this kind of subtle texture, which isn't perfectly smooth, but it does look quite nice. Whew. All right, so after a lot of painting and sanding and painting and sanding again, we finally have a really clean looking model here. That seam from sticking the two halves together is nearly invisible. You know, if I was gonna use this as a, as a cast for a mold, I probably would keep going a few more rounds of that. But for this little paint job, I think it's gonna work just fine. So we've got our shark. Let's get our supplies. We got some paint brushes. We got a little cup to clean the brush. We got a little palette to mix our paints. And then of course, we've got the paints themselves. So we're gonna be using acrylic paint today. It's cheap, it's easy to work with. Uh, this stuff was maybe $2 altogether. So this is really the cheapest of the cheap. Craft Smart, which I got at Michael's. So really, we only need a few shades of gray. We've got black, gray, and white. And then we got some pink that I might use around the gums or something like that. But that's it. All right, this is everything we need to get painting. So let me just fill up this cup. I'll trim down this butcher paper. Let's not be excessive. Ah, almost a clean cut. All right, I fetched my pail of water. I also got this little paper towel to help dry out my brushes. So let's go ahead and start by mixing up some paint. Generally, you wanna start with the lightest colors and also the colors that will be covering the most surface area. So in this case, I'm gonna start by mixing my white and my gray to create a nice light gray that's gonna be covering the belly of my shark. So let's go ahead and stir these colors together until we have a nice consistent light gray. So we'll go ahead and pop the shark off of its little stand for now so that we can access the belly and we'll just start brushing on the paint. Now I noticed right away that I was leaving behind quite a bit of brush strokes rather than getting that solid flat color that I'm going for. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that I'm using this very cheap acrylic paint. More expensive paints will have more pigment in them which creates a more solid color. We should still be able to get a nice flat color. We'll just have to do several coats of paint. Whereas if we did pay the extra amount for fancy acrylic, it could have been a quicker job. But you know, I feel like you should always start with the cheapest materials. It helps you really hone the technique and builds discipline or something like that. Anyways, as you can see, I'm pretty much going over most of the shark with this light gray. Since it's the lightest color, I don't have to worry about being totally accurate because all the other colors will basically go on top of that. Here where I'm brushing, you can see there's this kind of lighter, gross patch on the shark. And what happened there was I started applying the second coat of paint before the first coat was completely dry. And that ended up kind of peeling off the first layer. So you definitely want to do multiple coats, but wait for the undercoat to dry first. I was able to fix up that light patch with about three more coats of paint. Once I've got all my light gray areas down, I'm gonna go ahead and start the next largest portion, which is the top of the shark. And for this one, I'm just gonna use the gray straight out of the tube. It's a bit lighter than the gray I used for my 3D pen version of this shark, but I think it'll look quite nice. With this one, the streaking and cheapness of the paint is even more obvious, but I realized you can't freak out about how messy the first coat looks. It all ends up coming together. You just gotta be patient, and do several coats, waiting for them to dry in between. Now with this gray, I will have to be a bit more careful for certain areas, 
where I am starting to define the actual outline of the different colors. Here along the nose, I'm gonna do my best to just create a single clean brush stroke. I'm trying to create really clean edges here to kind of match the cartoony look of the great white shark. But of course, the way that you paint this is gonna depend a bit on the look you're going after. Once again, we'll go over all of that with several coats until we've got a nice consistent color. And now we can start working on some of the more detailed color work. So I'm gonna switch to this small little brush and then we're gonna pick up some of this pink paint and do a little detail around the gums. It can be quite tough to get really clean little details here and I wasn't perfect, but the great thing about stuff like this is the more detail you add, the more it hides all the little mistakes and imperfections. You just have to keep adding little intricacies and in the end it'll all come together to form a nice looking end product. I'll use the same brush to start adding little dots all across my shark. So instead of blending these colors, I'm kind of borrowing that pointillism effect that I used with my original pen drawing and I'm carrying that over to the sculpture here. So I'll have some dark gray dots blending into the light gray and I'll also do some light gray dots blending into the dark. I quite like the look of that, so I'll go ahead and continue this around the shark, applying it strategically where I think it looks good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and work on the lips here using that same straight out of the tube gray. And this is where it starts getting pretty precarious. I wanna be pretty precise with this because we're not gonna be painting a darker color on top of the lips. This is where I wanna to try to clean things up as much as possible around those gums. Next up, it's the eyes, and those are gonna be done in this straight black color, which is really scary. This is the darkest color we're using, obviously, and if you mess that up, it's gonna be really annoying to try to fix. So I'm being very careful here, and very slowly working my way out to the edge of the eye. It can also be quite tricky to make sure both eyes are the same size, but luckily this printed model has some indication of the actual eyes. So we're just using the crease of the model to determine how much we wanna paint. With this leftover black, I figured why not mix it in with the gray and create another level of color. So I created this slightly darker gray and used that to add some more dots along the top of the shark. We'll also use that to fill in the nostrils here. All right, that's the last of our painting, but I did decide to finish this off with a coat of varnish, which should help protect the paint and also bring out a bit more vibrance from the colors. So I went ahead and shook it up and applied a coat. And this does look shiny while I'm spraying it on, but it will actually dry matte. The only part that I want to be glossy are the eyes. So I'm just gonna spray a bit of gloss into this cap and then manually brush it onto the eyes using a paintbrush. As I'm doing this, you'll notice that there's a bit of cloudiness forming on top of the shark. And I think that had to do with either the humidity level or I just applied too thick of a coat of varnish. So while that did end up going away a bit as the varnish was drying, it never got completely clear again. So in the end, I think maybe I shouldn't have done that varnish. Anyways, he still looks great. So now we're just gonna go ahead and mount him onto his base. So we'll get our base, we'll get our acrylic rod, and we'll put everything in place. Let's see if we can just pop this on top. Oh, not quite. I did drill a bit too far into that shark, but have no fear, the hot glue gun is here. We'll just go ahead and apply a bit of hot glue on either end. First, we'll stick the acrylic rod into the base. And then for the shark itself, I'm just gonna go ahead and pump this hole full of hot glue so that we kind of just fill it up. Do be careful not to put too much in there because the hot glue can actually get hot enough to melt the filament, but this is a pretty low temperature gun I'm using here, so I didn't have that problem. 
Once I had a good glob of hot glue inside of that hole, I just went ahead and placed my shark on top of the acrylic, positioned it, and just held it in place with my hands until that glue cooled down and hardened enough to hold its own. But that's it. We finally have our painted 3D printed great wide shark and what a good boy he is. We did it! We painted a 3D print of the Great Wide Shark and it came out great. Of course, like I mentioned, this was my first time painting a 3D print. I made some mistakes, I learned some lessons, and in the end I'm still really happy with how it came out. Although I know there's some experts out there who surely have some great advice for me, so please give me your two cents in the comments. Anyways, I am very happy with how this turned out. It's super cool, and if you think about the journey it took, it's pretty wild because we started with a sketch and I actually had an earlier sketch before that. That led to the 3D pen model and then that got 3D scanned and cleaned up and turned into this shark we have here today. And frankly, I think it's the best great wide shark yet. No offense. I really hope you guys enjoyed this kind of a video because for me it's a blast to take my two-dimensional black and white doodles and turn them into something completely different like this sculpture. It's really cool and if you guys follow me on Instagram at rejected.animals you know that I've got like hundreds of these weird silly creatures so there's a lot more that can be done. I think I'll definitely be making more of these rejected animals but what I do want to know is whether you guys would rather see more 3D pen versions or 3D modeled and 3D printed versions of my rejected animals. I'll put up one of those fun YouTube polls for you guys to answer. All right, we're just about done, but I do have one more very exciting announcement. Stickers! Yes, that's right. I have some really cool rejected animal stickers that are now available in my store, devinmontes.com store. You can get this five pack of rejected animals stickers. I think they came out so cool and I'm gonna stick one on my guitar, I'm gonna stick one on my skateboard, one on the back of my car window. These are durable, weatherproof vinyl stickers so they can handle being stuck just about anywhere. Yeah, I'm a big fan of stickers, and if you are as well, you should hop on this because I've got a limited supply, and I don't know when I'll be making more rejected animal stickers. We'll see how it works. Okay, well that's really it for today's video, so thank you so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Devin. This is Make Anything. Of course, don't forget to stay inspired.